Hello, I'm Dr. Angela Moore, and today I'm going to share with you my top 10 tips for proactive absence management. Absences will occur, but you can be proactive and can minimise the effect on your business. Tip 1. Quantify the problem. So how big is your absence problem? Do you know what your absence rate is? If not, then just divide the number of hours of absence by the total number of scheduled hours per year. It really is that simple. OK, so if you have 10 people with an absence rate of 2.5%, how much absence do you have to deal with each year? 10 people times 37.5 hours times 52 weeks times 2.5% is 487.5 hours per year. If you work 8 hour shifts, that's 61 shifts per year. If you work 12 hour shifts, that's 41 shifts per year. Tip 2. Know your workload. Firstly, how many people do you expect to be in work each day? Then consider what the minimum number of people you really need in each day is. Are there any days where you could cope with less, for example, bank holidays? Do you have any especially busy days when you need all hands on deck, as it were? For instance, stock take week. Is everyone required or do you just need to focus on your key skills? Tip three, understanding your absence rate. Do you know what your absence rate is telling you? You can use your absence rate to estimate how many people will be absent each day. You can even go into each shift or scale set to understand how much absence you need to cope with. Let's take the example of an office with an absence rate of 2.5% and 15 people. You can easily find out how often an absence will occur with my ebook, Understanding Your Absence Rate, available now from Amazon. Here is an extract of my book. Along the top is the expected number of people who will be absent each day. Down the side is the number of people scheduled to come in each day. So since the example has 15 in the office, we go down till we come to 15. This shows that on 178 days, no one will be absent. On 68 days, we'd expect one person to be absent. On 12 days, two people will be absent. And on one day per year, we'd expect three people to be absent. We have now reduced the absence problem down to four scenarios. We know how often each scenario is likely to occur. Tip four, create an absence cover policy. You can reduce your absence problems down to just a handful of scenarios. So what will you do when no one is absent? What do you do when one person is absent? What do you do when two people are absent, etc.? When can you cope? Obviously, if no one is absent, you can cope. But what if one person was absent? Can you still cope? When would you call in a cover person? Is it when the first absence occurs or only on weekdays, etc.? Who will you call in? Do you have a list? Have you created a schedule up front? Do you do a round robin? Do you use an agency? Tip five, know your absence resource. Who can cover an absence? Is it a small group of people or is it everyone? Do you cover through internal or external resources? How much of your absence can you cover? Sometimes you have to cover all absences because of the risk to lives, equipment, or your SLAs. However, most people will have a budget. You can estimate the cost of absence up front, and then if you can't cover it within your budget, make informed decisions about when you can and can't cover an absence. It is always most important to cover key skills, but these are often the hardest to replace. Tip six. Use banked hours. Banked hours are prepaid for hours that are an effective absence cover arrangement. So the first question is, does your company have a banked hours policy? And are they using them elsewhere? Sometimes it is impractical to pre-schedule all of your contracted hours into your roster up front. The leftover hours can then be put into a bank and used when needed. Banked hours are used to cover for absence and busy workloads. You can be used in conjunction with other absence management procedures. 
If you would like to find out more about Bank Towers, then my ebook is available from Amazon. It includes how to implement and manage Bank Towers arrangements. Tip 7. Use Flex Shifts. Flex Shifts are very useful and a versatile tool for covering absence. Shifts can be flexed up so they are longer than originally scheduled or down. Sometimes a flex shift can even be stood down so it is eliminated altogether if not required. Most commonly, flex shifts are used to turn an 8 hour shift into a 12 hour shift to cover for absence. When using flex shifts, you can determine how many you will need to be available each day. For example, if you're only expecting a maximum of three to be off on any day, then you would only need three flex shifts. You do need arrangements in place that will say who is responsible for determining that the shift should be flexed. And you also need to say at what point the decision will be made. Tip eight, effective communication. Because people try to ignore the problem of absence, as much as possible, they don't talk about it or make policies that can be implemented smoothly. You need to have a process in place that you can be informed of who is expected to be absent off and when. For how long, the length of the expected absence is something that is very often forgotten. Most companies have the policy that absences must be reported within an hour of the shift starting. That is because in an office, no one is about before that. However, the sooner an absence is reported, the sooner you can implement cover arrangements. Even if it results in a false alarm, this may often be preferable to coping without. Once you know about an absence, you then need a way to inform the cover person that they will be required. The sooner you know about an absence, the sooner you can tell the cover person. Tip 9. Set up to monitor and record. You need a way of recording all absences. You also need to know who else will be in each day so that you can make a decision about if a cover person is needed and who do you need with which skills. For office workers, we have the yearly planner which calculates how many will be off each day. For shift workers, we have Visual Road to X. Visual Road to X records all the shifts, sickness and holidays. It highlights if you are short on a shift and monitors everyone's hours and banked hours. Tip 10. Reports. You should review your absence policy each year to see if it is still working and if it fails at any point. You can calculate your absence rate. Both Visual Road to X and the yearly planners do this for you automatically. Each year you should plot your absences to see how they occurred. Both Visual Road to X and the professional yearly planners do this for you automatically. Then you can compare each year to the last. Check if your absence policy worked or if it was implemented correctly. If there were any failures, how did you cope? And can you use that experience to improve your policies? Here is a sickness plot from our yearly planners. A simple plot like this means that you can quickly identify where high sickness occurred and if more sickness occurred than was anticipated. If you would like to know more about managing your personnel, then our ebooks are available now from Amazon. We also have the yearly planners for officers and visual rotor X for shift workers. We help companies around the world become more effective through better staffing operations. If you would like to know more, please visit our website at www.oranalyst.com. Thank you for watching.